Would you like to hear the voice of God more clearly, to be able to understand when He speaks to you, to be able to hear his, Him in the still, small voice? Well, you can every day. Stay tuned to find out more. Welcome to the Abundant Life Program with Ashley and Carly Terradez. Hello and welcome to Abundant Life. My name is Ashley Terradez and this is my wife Carly and we're so glad you've joined us today in the lounge. We've got an exciting program for you. We're talking about hearing the voice of God and hearing the voice of God more clearly. I don't know about you, but I want to be able to hear God's voice even clearer. So wherever stage you are in your relationship with God, we can all hear his voice clearer. And it's so essential, it, you know, whether you're talking about spiritual gifts or just walking your everyday life, we need to hear God's voice clearly, praise God. So that's what we're going to be looking at today, some Amen. practical tips on how we can hear God's voice. Amen. Amen. And as children, we are created in his image to be able to understand, to be able to interpret, to be able to hear God when he speaks to us. Amen. Amen. It's part of the normal Christian life. It's a normal Christian life. I've got a verse here. This is our key verse, if you like. This is John 10, verse 20. 27. This is John chapter 10, verse 27, puts it this way. This is Jesus speaking. He says, my sheep hear my voice and I know them and they follow me. And right from the off, I want you to know if you're born again today, if you're a believer, you can hear God's voice. This is a promise you've got from God. You can hear his voice. And I know a lot of believers we come across, you know, we travel the world. Mm -hmm. We are privileged enough to hold conferences and mm -hmm. go to many, many churches. And we have a lot of believers say to us, I just can't hear God's voice. I'm just, you know, I just, I can't hear his voice clearly or I don't feel like I can hear God's voice. The truth is you can hear God's voice. And you need to start from that position of, you know, I can hear God's voice clearly right. instead of, you know, um, I, I, I'm struggling or I can't hear God's voice. That's a negative confession. Let's mm -hmm. start with a positive positive confession that we can hear God's voice. Amen. In fact, we were created to respond to the voice of God. Amen. That's right. God's, that's, that's how we're designed it's in, to. It's in our spiritual DNA. That's what we're designed to do, praise mm -hmm. God. So that's our key verse. right? And really hearing God's voice, I mean, even in small things is important, but it can be life or death. I remember one time I was driving along in my truck and I'm just driving down the, it was a divided highway mm -hmm. and there was a hitchhiker on the side of the road. And he was dressed up. You could see he was, he'd probably had a hard time. He, he looked like he might have been homeless or whatever, but he was hitchhiking. And as I was driving towards him, I saw him in the distance and I felt the Holy Spirit, that, that still small voice. I, felt, I heard God's voice and God's voice said to me, pick him up, pick up that hitchhiker, pick up, pick up that hitchhiker. That's a, That's quite tongue, a tongue twister. That's a tongue twister. <laughs> Stop and give that hitchhiker a ride. Mm -hmm. And I was like, no way. I was like, that's just me. I'm just, no way. I was like, I can't hear you, Lord. You know, I, did, I didn't want to, you know, in the flesh, in the natural, I didn't want to. So I kept driving. And the closer I got to him, the louder the voice got, pick him up, pick him up. And in the end, I, I ignored it. I drove past him. And even once I drove past him, then it got really loud. It's almost like the Holy Spirit shouted at me, pick him up. So I thought, oh man. So I had to turn around. I drove back past him and then turned around again and, and finally stopped and picked him up. He got in my truck and he said, thank you so much for giving me a ride. And he said, uh, the first thing he said was, what do you do for a living? What do you do? I said, well, I said, I'm actually a minister. I'm a, uh, I'm a minister of the gospel. And he, he looked at me and said, are you kidding me? I said, no. He said, he said, just two minutes ago, he said, I prayed. And I said, God, send someone to help me. I need, I need one of your, your workers to help me. And he sent you. And, and so he got in my truck. Now we're driving down the road and uh, uh, we spent, I don't know, about 20 minutes together. And I ministered to this guy. It turns out he was born again um, years and years ago, but he, he rededicated his life to the Lord. I led him in the baptism of the Holy Spirit. He received his prayer language. It was a powerful time of ministry. Mm -hmm. Now, when I dropped him off, he got out of my truck and he shut the door and then he quickly opened the door again. He said, I want to tell you one thing, sir. He said, he said I want you to know, he said, this was my, going to be my last night. He said, I was going to end it tonight. He said, because he'd been through so many hard times. Wow. So many bad things had happened to him. He said, this is going to be my last night. He said, and I, I prayed today and, and I said, God, if you love me, then you're going to have to show me. He said, and, mm -hmm. and spending time with you has just encouraged me. He said, I feel like a new man now. And he was, I mean, he was so encouraged. He, right. he started off downbeaten, thinking about committing suicide. And by the end of our conversation, he was, he was encouraged and he was ready to go at it again. My point being this, me hearing the voice of God was a life or death situation. I mean, I know you've had similar things mm -hmm. where it's, God's warned you about things, but well, you don't know how many times God's trying to speak to us and have us help other people, or maybe it's warn us about something to come. But God's voice, hearing God's voice clearly could really be life or death for us and for others. So it's that important, as well as small things as well. It's not just the, little, the big things. God wants right. to communicate with us and hear his voice in the small things right. as part, well. Part of having a relationship with the Lord is everyday conversation. Yeah. You know, sometimes our relationship with the Lord boils down to just crisis moments. And, right. and God, you know, God can be there for those. Amen. He can 
be there in the middle of a crisis. But more than that, having having a life giving relationship with our father means having everyday normal conversations as well, right? Amen. If the only time I ever you know spoke to Ashley was when I was in the middle of a crisis and I needed something, that's going to be a kind of sorry relationship. Right. But you know, sometimes our relationship with God, um, we just we just go to Him in the, in those moments of absolute need, in those moments of crisis. But there's a relationship that we can develop with the Lord um, that is much more intimate than that, and that's that's hearing His voice in our everyday situations. Amen. You know, I like to call it you know small talk with Jesus, yeah. right? But um, I remember one time I was at home. We li- we lived on a farmhouse in England, and I was just baking a pie, and everybody, <sighs> everyone was pies. out for the day. Was it a savoury one or a fruit one? I can't okay. remember. In this farm, Carl used to pick the the what were they? What, what fruit was that? The fruit, green, the gauges. green gauge fruit off the trees. All different fruits we used to have in this farm. And she used to make fruit pies. Man, you're making me hungry. They oh were good. Goodness. And anyway, chicken pies. And, chicken pies. Anyway, oh, so I made that. Made pies. this. I made this pie, and yeah, I, I I'm just. <laughs> It's not, even, it's not even lunchtime yet. <laughs> pies, good pies. Uh, I'd just taken out the oven and, and set it on top of the stove to cool down. And I went upstairs to check some emails, I think, on the computer. And we had three farm cats. We oh. had mice on the farm. We had cats to, to take cats. care of the mice. And they were useless mouses, actually. I didn't actually. want one cat. And we ended up with three cats. <sighs> they said, if you're going to get one cat, because we was on a farm, you need a cat to, uh, to keep the mice down. I said, OK. So they went to get one cat. They said, you're going to have one cat, you've got to have two cats, because two cats, they'll play with each other and they're less work. And then we had three kids at the time. They're all little so they said if you're going to get two cats you might as well get three cats one for each of the children so the man who didn't want any cats turned up back home with three cats i don't know what a collection of cats is called but you know a gaggle of cats we had a anyway. herd of cats anyway so we had three cats and they're, they're useless because they'd never actually catch the real mice in fact they just bring them in and let them go in the house which defeated the whole purpose once well, they put a rabbit in the house I'm watching TV and I thought I'm going crazy. I see in the corner of my eye a rabbit run through the living room and I'm like, I must be, it must be t- very late. I must be eating too much cheese pizza or something. I that was, and then I saw again a rabbit run through my living room and what it was, the cat caught a rabbit, brought it into the house. Just to play was, with it. It wasn't quite dead, so it was running around the house. Anyway, anyway I'm getting rest. right off. I'm going down a rabbit trail. Do lunch. Anyway, so we'll 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 back in. So as I'm sitting there on my, on my computer, the cat would like to sit around me and watch me move the electronic mouse. They found right. that way more entertaining and see the little arrow, the little cursor move across the screen. Yeah. So as I'm doing that, I'd been practicing up until this point, um, just hearing the voice of God in my quiet times with him, just in the, little, in the, in the, in the still small voice. Mm-hmm. And uh, as I'm sitting there checking my emails, I hear what I, I believe to be the voice of God on the inside of me saying, the cat is eating your pie. I thought, the cat's not eating my pie. I've got three cats, then they're all here. The cat is not eating my pie. So I carry on doing my emails, but this this voice gets louder and louder on the inside of me. And I nearly miss it because, you know, that voice sounded kind of like me, mm-hmm. right? But it was a still sm- small voice of God speaking to me. And in the end, curiosity got the better of me. So curiosity killed the cat. Well, not quite, Finch. but okay. almost after I found out what the cat did. So I just decided this is this is crazy. Look, I'm looking here and I'm seeing three cats and there's no cat eating my pie. All my cats are present and accounted for. But I decided to go downstairs and just check on my pie, right? The Lord was concerned about your pie. Well, so this is one of the things we think. The Lord is, he's the creator of the universe. He wouldn't be concerned about pie. The Lord is concerned with small details. But like, he's so pie. awesome. The Lord is so <laughs> awesome. Yes, he's the creator of the universe. He's, but he's also concerned about the small things in our life. Right? I feel like sometimes we like miss it because we don't get the Lord involved in the small things in our life. Uh, well, definitely. So I went down into the kitchen and sure enough, there is a cat, there is a cat on the countertop eating my pie. The fourth cat. A fourth cat came in through the cat flap. This is a stray cat. A stray cat and had come into the kitchen. My pie was that good, right? So if you'd listened to the Lord in the first place, it would have saved the pie. Well, as I went down to the kitchen and saw this cat eating my pie, I'm like, what is happening? And and then I hear the Lord say, I told you. Holy Spirit said, I told you so. If you'd listened to me in the first place, you could have saved your pie. So the fourth cat was, in fact, Chisholm. We named mm-hmm. him. He decided to live with us as well. So we ended up with four cats. And he was a male cat, and the other three were female. He wasn't real popular. No, he in wasn't the house real popular. Of female cats. He wasn't real popular. But anyway, four cats. <laughs> so the Holy Spirit was warning you about your pie. Isn't that yeah, amazing? But you know, there's a, there was a deeper reason for that that I didn't know at the time. It wasn't just about the cat eating my pie, but it was about spending time with the Lord and developing that intimate relationship because it's in those times of intimacy that we, we hear from God about the more important things in our lives mm-hmm. other than just pie. Amen. And a few days later, 
that I was driving our children to school down the, we, you know, we lived in a rural area. So we were driving down the country lane and these are, these are national speed limit, single lane I'm going to have to roads. explain this to our American 60 mile viewers. an hour roads. So even though we live in America now, um, we need to explain this. In, in, in England, where we lived, there was uh, their farm lanes and they're actually single carriageways and they've got two hedgerows to either side. And the national speed limit is 60 miles an hour. So people buzz around these little farm roads doing 60 miles an hour, mm -hmm. sometimes even more. But you can go both ways on them. Blind corners, yeah. And then you have to wait. If someone's coming the other way, you have to move over like almost into the bush. Yeah, they and have like passing, passing places. Passing places. But sometimes, I mean, you, you come around a corner and there'll be someone head on at 60 miles an hour. That's how, so you have to like slow down the corners. And it's, tough of a, yeah. it's quite a rush. It's kind of... Primitive, really, it but anyway. <laughs> so we're driving. I'm driving the three children to school, then you know, that, that morning, and going quite fast on this road. And all of a sudden, I hear the Holy Spirit on the inside of me say, "Break!" really loudly. And I mean, I didn't fast and pray. I didn't phone a friend. You know, I didn't. I didn't ask for confirmation. I just slammed my foot on the brake. And right in front of me, a tractor came through the hedgerow and crossed right. I mean, we would have had a, a, a head-on collision at 60 mile an hour. I mean, wow. that, that was probably a, a, a potentially fatal accident right wow. there. And that, that was avoided because I had practiced listening to the voice of God in the still small, in the still small quiet times. In so the, the Lord things. was warning you about yeah. that. It reminds me of the time when the pastor was driving around a windy road and he had his window down and the car came the other way and it was one of his congregants. Mm -hmm. And uh, he'd had some. Is this a joke? Yeah. Oh god. He had, I'm, I'm here now. That's too late. This and, is a dad joke. And he'd been he'd been very upset with this man, and they'd been they'd had a falling out, and the guy was coming the other way, and as they as they passed each other on the corner quite closely, they both had their windows down, and the guy shouted out to the pastor. He went pig, and he went you. Did. The pastor just lost it. I mean, he'd been holding it together for years, but that was it. It was too much. He went. He shouted back. He went you jerk and. How'd it go at him like that? Can you say that one? I don't TV? know. You just did. I have to edit that out. Anyway. They might so have anyway, to put the beeps up for you. Uh, anyway, whatever it was, he, he said some nasty word. He called this man nasty word. It's too late word. now. It's out there. Anyway, as they passed their cars. <laughs> anyway, the pastor went around the corner and hit the pig in the road. The guy was just warning him about the pig. Ah. Uh, he wasn't calling him a pig. Yeah. He was just saying, uh -huh. around the corner, there's a pig. Be it's careful. It's still not funny. The pastor thought he was calling him a pig. I, I understand. It's shouted just. Shouted back at him. It's just not funny. Anyway, so hearing the voice of God is what we're talking about here today. Stick we're to talking preaching. about John 10, 27. If you're a believer, you can hear the voice of God. And, um, and he has better jokes than Ashley. Yeah, he does have better jokes. We're going to look at different ways we can hear the voice of God. That's one of the first things we're going to look at. And God speaks to us in lots of different ways. And actually, he'll speak to us in different ways, depending on our personality, depending mm -hmm. on the situation and things like that. And what we want to go through, we want to make this teaching practical. Um, we're going to cover a few episodes of this. So we want to start off with the different ways God speaks to us. And um, this is really going to help you. The first thing I've got here, the first way God speaks to us is by his word, by the word of God. Mm -hmm. I think this is probably the most important thing we're going to cover. And uh, really, the word of God is, is one of the main ways you're going to hear from God. Right. In fact, um, I heard a prophet friend of mine, someone came up to him and said, give me a word, give me a word. I want, you know, uh, uh, tell me what God's saying right now. Tell me what God's saying right now. And he how pulled about, out his Bible, yeah, pulled out his here. Bible and gave it to him and said, there's thousands <laughs> of words in there. But it really is the, what, the main way God's going to speak to us is by his word. And a lot of the times, we think, I've been to churches, they said, well, that's type of old news. We want like the revelation we word We want of God. something a little bit more exciting. But this is the living word. The word exactly. of God is the living word of God. And it's amazing how even the same verse that you've read a hundred times, God can make it jump off the page. And I'm sure if you're a believer, most of you watching could tell me testimonies about how when you've read the word, all of a sudden a verse has popped out, a passage has jumped out at you, and yeah. it's spoken to you. God's spoken to you directly. The word of God is alive. It's a living word, and it will, it will jump out at you and speak to you. So the word of God is, but you have to read it to be able to hear from it. And, you know, yeah. that's, it's important that we read the word. Someone was asking me this question the other day, how do I study the Bible? And I really studied the Bible actually um, as part of my relationship with the Lord. Mm -hmm. So when I get my Bible out in the morning, you know, I start by asking the Lord, where should I begin in the scriptures? Now, I'm not saying that you shouldn't have a daily reading plan. Some people really like that where they, they have a set, a set formula right. that they follow. Or they have like a whatever. devotional. 
every have a day with Jesus. And that's fine. Then every other day with Jesus. <laughs> right. Then one, about once Depending a week. On how about once are. a week with Jesus. About once a month <laughs> with, Jesus. with Jesus. Then oh no, I've got to catch up 50 with Jesus is just to keep on track. Oh my goodness. One of those devotionals. Oh, then then you get behind. The problem with the daily reading plans is you, you get behind, behind you and then up. you feel like you've got to like cram 50 chapters into one day to get back on track. Otherwise, you're going to get into condemnation. And then you read so fast, you're not even take, paying attention. Right. That's not a great way of doing it. That's but not good. Reading the Bible, uh, our pastor reads the Bible every year. He just reads through it he about three or four it. chapters yeah. a day. And, that, and that's Whatever fine. you want to do. Whatever, whatever ministers to you and you get revelation from, that's fine. But I like, personally, I like to um, start out my day and I'm just like, Lord, where, where, where do I need to begin in this book? Everything is good. Everything is for my, for my benefit. But where do you want to s- do you do start the old, speaking to me? Do you do the old flick and You know, point? I tried that. pretty dangerous. That, and the problem is I did this when, when I was younger. And I like, I'd open it to Leviticus, things to do with mold. You don't really you know, mold first thing in the morning. And, you know, not first thing in the morning. Maybe the Lord so was speaking to you. Maybe I was just being unspiritual and he could have spoken to me about mold. I have noticed we've got a little tiny patch growing in the corner of the bathroom. I've got to fix that. Anyway, anyway. <laughs> so when I'm, when I'm reading the word, I really like to um, ask the Lord where to start. And sometimes it'll, he'll give me a, a specific verse to start in. Mm-hmm. Or other times he's, he's like, um, read the book of Acts or you know, it'll be a whole book that he gives me or a passage that he gives me. But for me, that's not just about reading, ever reading the word. That's an opportunity to exercise hearing him when I ask him a direct question where should I start and I and I just sit and I listen and I wait for the response it's an exercise in hearing as well see this is where we're different and this is why I want to include everyone in this because I'm very different this is me when I say God speak to me do you know what I hear crickets crickets nothing I mean (laughs) silence in fact there's been times when we've had major decisions to make one of them I'm thinking in 2006 we had to decide, was we going to give up our business? Was we going to move to the other end of the country? Was we going to uh, you know, change our children's school, uh, move house and go to Bible school? That was in 2006. Mm-hmm. And uh, Carly said to me, go and listen to God. Go and spend a day. And, li- and I knew Carly was serious because I was halfway through remodeling our house. And yep. she said, stop remodeling the house and go and spend a day with the Lord. Go so sit on the beach and I drove out to the to beach Jesus. and I went out to the Lord and said, Lord, speak to me. Should I go to Bible college? Should I go to Bible college? Speak to me. I'm here, Lord. I'm listening. And guess what I heard? Seagulls, nothing, crickets, nothing. So we, we're different. Carly can ask mm-hmm. God, speak to me, and you hear him right away. When I ask God to speak to me, I don't hear him like that. I hear God through the, well, I, there's lots of different ways we hear God. I'm going to show you. But for me, I hear him through the word. I hear him like later on in the day, I'll be doing something, and I'll have an impression, or I'll have a picture, mm-hmm. or I'll have a, you know, a hunch or something like that. Desires, we're going to cover some of those. I'm getting ahead. But anyway, I just want people to know, because some people think, well, Carly, you know, she just sits there and God speaks to her. I've tried sitting there and I hear nothing. So God <laughs> speaks to us in different listen. ways. I don't listen enough. I speak too much. That's what it is. My wife says I don't listen to her or, or something, something like, like that. that. I can't remember now. Something like that. So anyway, what would you say? But anyway, God speaks to you like that. For me, it's a little bit different. So mm-hmm. the word of God is what we're talking about. The word is alive. It's living. Now, sometimes you're going to read the word and it doesn't seem like it's living. It's just going to be like a book. That's fine. Be faithful. Read the word of God. Mm-hmm. You know, Jesus, the word became flesh. Jesus is the Word of God. The Word of God is living. It's not like any other book. And I'm all into, you can read other people's books and biographies and, and all these things. That's fine. But that people's does not replace, yeah, commentaries, it doesn't replace the Word of God. The Word of God should be the authority in your life. The Word of God should be your go-to all the time. And it's amazing how God will give us a word for something uh, specific, but very particular from the Word of God. And it's amazing how even though it was, you know, most of it was written two, three thousand years mm-hmm. ago, he can tell us something specific for today through the Word of God. It's and the I, most up-to-date book. I find actually the Word of God is a great benchmark for testing. Like sometimes we, we feel like maybe God is speaking to us about something, mm-hmm. but we're not 100 percent sure it could no. be God. It, it might just be, you know, we've eaten too much cheese. You know, it's just an idea that's kind of popped into our head. You know, I've gone to God in those times and I've asked him to show me in the word, to bring confirmation in the word. Because when God speaks to us, he'll always confirm his word. In fact, actually, just last night, I had a dream last night and the Lord spoke a scripture to me in my dream. You haven't told me about this? Didn't I? Oh, well, no. anyway. It's you pretty, had a dream? Cool. I did. Last right? night? It's pretty cool. Last night. Tell me more. Fresh revelation right here, right? Is that why you was fidgeting and woke me up all night? Probably. I was okay. kind of excited. Okay. So um, anyway, he spoke to me, Jeremiah 33, verse 3. So what I did when I woke up in the morning was I got my Bible out and this is what it says. It says, call to me and I will answer you and show you great and mighty things which you did not know. Oof. I mean, that's powerful, that's a good right? Word. God's saying, call Fresh to me. Talk, talk to me. I want to have a relationship with you because when you're in relationship with me, I'm going to answer you and I'm going to show you things that you didn't know. That's awesome. Praise God. 
We love the Friday. word. The word is somewhere we want to be camping out. Nowadays, we've got no excuse. You know, with, with technology, I'm sounding old, right, with technology. But uh, we can have, you know, most of us have smartphones. We can have the Bible right there with tablets and things like that. I mean, we've, when we're waiting somewhere in line or something, there's no reason why you can't be reading the Bible. There's no reason yeah. why you can't be in the Word wherever you are. There's audible. I've got the audible Bible, the complete Bible mm -hmm. on audio. Sometimes I listen to it and I'm on an airplane or when I'm driving and things like that. You even you know, have the Bible on your watch, didn't you? I have, yeah. There's a Bible app on my watch so I can even read the Bible go. on my watch. a little bit. I mean, you wouldn't want to do a whole, a whole like, you know, read a whole book, but you can have <laughs> right. verses come up on there. But nowadays with technology, in fact, you know, it talks about write them on the tablet. That's of it. your heart, See, bite them on God the tablet, he was, he, bind them to your wrist, I think it. it says bind them to your wrist, and then Google Glasses is probably going to be put them before your eyes. See, I mean, it's the Bible. So anyway, we've got no excuse to keep the Word of God in front of us, and that's why, the, you know, the Hebrews said, keep the Word of God in front of you wherever you go. In fact, this is a great verse. I love mm -hmm. this. This is uh, Proverbs 6.22. Proverbs 6, verse 22 puts it this way. Talking about the Word of God, it says, when you roam, they will lead you. So the Word of God will lead us. It says, when you sleep, they will keep you. It's like you slept and the word yeah. gave you word, spoke to you. Mm -hmm. When you sleep, they'll keep you. And when you awake, they will speak with you. The word of mm -hmm. God will speak with us. It will commune with us. It's Jesus. It's, it's a living word. It will speak to us. So the word of God will speak to us. And it's, it's the best authority on anything is the word of God. In fact, I would ask you, you know, you know if, you've, if you've got something you're not sure about, if you've got a decision to make, and I ask God for a word. Say to God, show me in the scriptures a word. And yeah. even if it's something specific now, he will pull out a scripture. He will show you something and confirm it with his word. So the word of God is the, the, the most clear, um, what's the right word, reliable way that God speaks to us yeah. is through his word, through the word of God. And uh, as Carly said, he will never contradict his word. We're getting ahead of ourselves a little bit because we're also going to spend some time uh, uh, helping you uh, to decipher between God's voice, your own voice and the devil. And that's something we mm -hmm. need to work out. You know, when is it us? When is it the devil and when is it God? When is it just our flesh or our soul? When is it the devil and when is it God speaking to us? We need to discern those things. Right. And that's the, what the Word of God does. The Word of yep. God can decipher those things and separate those things and show you what's you and what's the devil. and what's. Because I've convinced myself it's God speaking to me before now. I've had a, a few times where God said this and, and it hasn't been. And when I've gone to the Word, God's shown me that it's not that case. So. The Word of God also talks about the Word being a lamp to our feet. I love that. It's a lamp to our feet. The Word is like our lamp. And if we're trying to walk somewhere, you know, it, we can hold a lamp up and it will illuminate our path. We call them torches in England, but I guess you call them flashlights here in America. Man, so that, a flashlight, can, that can get you into a pickle pretty A flashlight, quickly. yeah. A flashlight is what they say here. I said, well, I said to my, one of my American friends, I let my kids, my, I gave my kids a torch each and they I told them. They thought we'd given them like a burning stick or something. And walk on the pavement. Know, and they right? said, you told your kids to walk in the middle of the road with a burning stick, fire, and they're like four years old. I said, no, no, walk on the sidewalk with a flashlight. So we can interpret. We're learning how to yeah. speak American. So, and we need to learn but, how to listen carefully. <laughs> I know, the, we're learning how to speak American. Right. So the word of God is, is uh, your lamp to your feet. So if you, if you feel like you're stumbling around in the dark, you don't know what direction to take, you don't know which, which way to go, you need to get into the word of God. And just like it said there in that, in that proverb I read, it will lead you, the, the word of God will lead us it's a lamp to our feet. The Word of God is, is going to sustain us. It's going to lead us. It's going to give us what we need. It's going to encourage us. So I'd encourage you, when you want to hear God's voice, go to the Word of God first. That's the mm -hmm. best place. And however busy you are, every one of us should be spending a daily time in the Word. This is no condemnation. It's, this is nothing to do with how God sees you. God loves you. He's made his mind up. When I first got born again, I was very uh, legalistic. I didn't understand grace. I didn't understand that my salvation was a free gift. And I thought I had to earn God's approval. So I would read the word out of law. I've got to read the word. I've got to spend time in prayer. In fact, and what happens if you if you missed it? Well, you missed it, then you're not quite as worthy as you was when you had did it. You know, it's all about you, and that's not the case. So I don't want anyone to be under condemnation or anyone feel like they're under obligation to do this. We just want you to enhance your relationship with God. God's already made up His mind about yeah. you. But if you get in the Word daily and spend time with Him daily, even if it's five or ten minutes a day, we can all find that time. Then you can actually you're going to be able to hear His voice clearer, and you're going to get to know Him. The Bible is really, you know, it's, it's God's story, it's God's character, it's who he is. And as we read that word, we're going to understand more and more about God. Right. So God, I believe that God is speaking to us all mm -hmm. the time Amen. in many different ways. You know, whether that's in words of wisdom, words of knowledge, whether that's, that's telling us the future, that's warning us about things to come, that's helping us to make um, good decisions. He can speak to us through different people. He can speak to us through the scripture, through dreams and visions, all the different ways that God can speak to us. He's speaking to us all the time. But oftentimes I think we miss it, miss listening, we miss hearing him because we aren't listening to him. Mm. 
And so what we're talking about here is developing some help, healthy habits um, that'll, that'll benefit you in your relationship with the Lord. And we want to be able to hear God. We know that God's desire if, is for us to be led by His voice. Amen. Amen. And so He's speaking to us all the time. But our part, our response, you know, Ashley mentioned uh, John 10, 27, my sheep, um, they hear my voice. We are made to hear God's voice. I know them and they follow me. If we want to really know God on an intimate level, and if we want to really follow the plans of God that he has for our life, that means first by hearing him, yeah. right? And that's talking about um, developing a listening relationship. Yeah, it really does. And you know, how do you know God only has good things for us? He's trying to lead you into good things. There's so many times I could look back on my life and think, man, if only I'd listened to God, if only I'd done what the Lord told me, it would have saved me this heartache or that heartache. Mm -hmm. In fact, many times Carly's had a word from God, like, I'm not sure about this. And I'll be like, no, it'll be okay. And then disaster and terrible situation. Then I look back, I was like, man, should listen to God's voice. Right. God knows best and he's trying to lead us in his ways. And he's trying to get good things to us and lead us into good things. He's got the best plans for you. Yeah. He knows best. He created this world, He created you, He knows exactly how you work and what's best for you. So that's why we need to listen to His voice. So this is gonna be a series on how to hear God's voice more clearly. The first thing we've covered here is that you can hear God's voice through His word. That should be the one of the main ways you hear God's voice. You and, can hear God's voice. Yeah, and John and John 10, 27, <laughs> start, start believing that promise mm -hmm. that you can hear God's voice. That's the truth. He made you and you can hear His voice. Stop confessing that you can't hear it because the truth is you can hear His voice. And as you start stepping out in faith and believing it, you're gonna start hearing it more clearly. We want to give you yeah. some practical tips on how you can hear God's voice more clearly. So be sure to join us next time. We're out of time right now. Wow, go we so want to fast. pray for you before we let you go. Yeah. So Father God, I thank you for everyone watching and listening today. I thank you Lord, that as your children, your sheep, we can hear your voice. Amen. And I thank you Lord, everyone listening can hear your voice today. And I thank you Lord, you're speaking to us, you're talking to us and you have good things to mm. show us, good things to lead us into. And Lord, we trust you and we want to hear your voice more clearly, Lord. So help us, Lord, as we look at these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank Amen. you, Jesus. Isn't God good? Yep. God's so good. Thanks for joining us today. We're going to be back real soon. But until next time, remember, don't just settle for living a normal life when Jesus has paid for you to be able to live the abundant life. To order your copy of this teaching, visit our website, teradesministries.com or call us at 719-600-3344. I don't know about you, but I want to be able to hear God's voice clearly. God's got good things for us. He wants to lead us into good things. And I believe hearing His voice is essential to doing His will and to walking in the victorious life that He's given us. So I want to encourage you. We have some products available. They're on the screen. Get these resources. We've only covered a very small part of this today. But if you get these resources, they're going to teach you practical ways that you can hear God's voice more clearly. So get the resources and we'll see you next time. Call us at 719-600-3344. We want to thank the friends and partners of Teradez Ministries. Your faithful financial support enables us to produce the Abundant Life program and spread the good news of God's love around the world. If you have been blessed by this program, we invite you to donate and partner with Teradez Ministries. Visit our website, teradezministries.com and become a partner today. Coming up next on the Abundant Life program. But Jesus turned around and corrected Peter and said, get behind me, Satan. Why? Because the enemy was using Peter to speak to mm -hmm. Jesus. Now, he was planting a suggestion, he was planting a suggestion that would be wrong. And it was tempting Jesus. Right. He, if it hadn't tempted him, it. Jesus wouldn't have been so strong mm -hmm. to rebuke it. You know, in Isaiah, it talks about every weapon formed against you, you shall condemn. Every lying tongue that comes Isaiah against 54, you, you should condemn. 17. Isaiah 54, 17. So, so this, this word came from Peter. It was actually the enemy tempting Jesus not to go to the cross because Jesus had the choice. And because it was tempting him, Jesus turned around and rebuked it. He quickly silenced that voice and said, get behind me, Satan. So he wasn't calling Peter Satan. He was just calling that word that Peter said, Satan. That temptation was from, right. the, from the enemy. So the enemy can use people sometimes.